Hello, and welcome to the Sunshine Sound Podcast with your host, Christine Mathias. Because it's the sound. Like, the sound is, like, where it really is, and, like, if you hear the sound, then it's, you can just follow the sound. Like, you don't have to try to, like, play something if you hear the sound of it. Like, it already has a sound that it, that it has, and you can either, like, override that or try to, or you can just, like, let that sound kind of flow. Hello and welcome to episode number 18 of the Sunshine Sound podcast. In this one, I interviewed Christian and Ronnie of the San Diego band's Aquarium. They are a local band. They're kind of surf rock, but they have some other influences. And they started off as a solo project of Christian's. He later brought on other musicians to flesh out the sounds. And that's kind of fitting for this interview as uh, Ronnie, Aquarium's guitar player, he's joins us about halfway through the interview. So we chat about a lot of fun stuff here, uh, like how the project got started in Virginia, where Christian moved from. It's funny enough, he's actually the second podcast guest to have moved here from Virginia not too long ago. And uh, so the band really started out with just Christian. He had a Casio keyboard and garage band, and he was able to put together these really cool sounds. So it just goes to show you how how creative you can be, even when you have uh, kind of limited tools. So he talks about his move to San Diego, what it's like to bring on new musicians to your project and kind of lose some control over it, but also uh, all that you can gain from bringing in new musicians. He also talks about how he uh, was able to book shows in San Diego pretty quickly, and he has some really good tips for how he was able to do that. We talk about other fun stuff like Viking horns and other neat instruments, and uh, of course, we'll get a chance to listen to a few of his recordings. They have this really cool lo-fi sound, which I personally really enjoy, so I love these tracks. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today in the studio, I have Christian from Aquarium. Thanks for being here. We might have uh, another one of your bandmates join us in a little bit. But uh, but for now, I uh, am glad you're here. I'd love to hear more about uh, about Aquarium. Like, how, how do you describe the project? Um, so it's, it's a project that I started probably about five years ago. And... I was living in Richmond, Virginia, and I was playing music with a couple friends, and we all kind of had different genres that we liked and that we were playing in other bands. So I kind of just started doing like a solo um, project, but I didn't want to like call it my name. So I kind of just decided to call it Aquarium. And I've just been writing songs since then and yeah, finding groups of people to play with. Very cool. And so like what... Um like if you had to describe like the genre of the music, like it's, I'm always interested to hear how people describe their own music. I think the genre, I think like the, um, from what a lot of people have heard of it so far, they would say that it's like surf music. And I think that that's definitely, I was drawing a lot of inspiration for um, the music that's recorded right now. And like that's public, but I don't think that's, necessarily where I w- like would have classified it if I was going to explain it to somebody mm. necessarily but that's sort of what I hear yeah. like about it so um but I think it's kind of just for me like um I, I just try to draw from as many different types of music and then take like a little piece of each one that I that I like and then sort of try to like respect it and make like a like a collaboration of different ones together. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And so um, when you first started just making music on on your own, like what um, what did you start off on? Did you start out like just your guitar or, or what did that look like? I think the very first recordings that I ever made, I had a, the the keyboard on my computer was playing the notes. And then I would just use the built-in microphone to like, like a like a computer keyboard. Yeah, like computer oh, cool. keyboard. Yeah, like on the Mac. Like, and then I would just sing through the microphone with my headphones on and try to put like a reverb or something on it to make it sound like 
really like spacey or like like sound like water or something like that oh wow that's yeah. a really interesting way to go about it and you, was that using GarageBand? were you saying yeah that's yeah that's pretty much the only program i really know how to use besides like an old task cam sure that my friend used a long time ago Very cool i love i mean i love it you just you know you it shows your creativity to just work with what you got um yeah so how does it work to make music from your from a computer keyboard like it's how do the is it just like different letters are assigned to different notes they they lay it out like instead of going like a b c it's just whatever the the middle keys are on the keyboard okay and then they assign the like the minor keys it's just like a piano keyboard okay though. They so lay then like, like the that. black keys are, are like the next row up on the keyboard oh interesting it forced it to be really simple because you can't you can only play like you can only hold down like four notes at a time because the keyboard's so small like you have like from c to c or something like that right. so it's like you have one octave to work with right so, yeah that would be pretty small yeah. yeah it forced the music to be very like it was always the simplest form at that time mm. because i because i couldn't like expand and do other octaves or try to play like a melody or something it was like just like the bass line i guess to whatever the song would would become later sure yeah so and so how how did you get started with music uh did you previously play other instruments growing up or, or what was that like i played piano as a kid my brother played piano and he was really good and like kind of made me not want to play piano anymore because <laughs> he was like too good. And then, um, so then I asked for a guitar and then I got a acoustic guitar, but I wasn't interested in it because I had an instructor that we just played scales and I didn't mm, like that. Yeah. And then my dad bought me an electric guitar and within like a week of me getting electric guitar, I saw uh, the the TV was on VH1 for some reason, <laughs> and it was like an Iron Maiden song came on, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, like I'm this is like this is what I'm yes. gonna do now. <laughs> this is like how it's gonna be." So nice. So did you uh, did you start playing in bands or anything when you were a kid? Yeah, but just like for fun, like we maybe played like a gig like with like people from our school there. Like, yeah, sure. In like maybe like middle school or something. Nice. But not until college did I really like pick it up again. Yeah, and so what? What did you do in college? Um, so I, I met this kid named Patrick who lived like in a dorm that I was I was going to school at like this film school, in Virginia, and um, we started just playing like show like open mic like shows, and then I met another guy who who actually went to my high school but I didn't really know him that well, and his name's Timmy, and he plays like music out in Richmond now, and we like recorded a bunch together, <laughs> so um, just like you know, random, like, he didn't do, like, really any electronic stuff at all. He would did everything, like, acoustic guitars or, like, like you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So that was kind of, like, I got to do two different styles of music at the same time for the first real bands that I was in, and then I, I thought that was cool to, like, be able to do both. Yeah, so, like, what were the styles of music? Well, one, this this one guy was, like, obsessed with Dave Matthews. That's yeah. Patrick. And, like, he was, like, he could play, like, guitar really well. And he was, like, really good live. And he, like, had a lot of energy and was, like, really upbeat. And, like, people liked to watch him play and hear him play. And then Timmy was more of, at that time, his band's really great now. But at that time, he was more, like, we would play at his house and just kind of, like, you know, make Beatles experimental like psychedelic music like cool. that kind of stuff yeah so like um, how were you like uh, like what was like the instrumentation for for that kind of like weird beatles music um just like old casio keyboards and like a kazoo <laughs> like weird drums like a didgeridoo um it's fun weird like just like anything just yeah like get high and just like right, right. like play something weird did you did you record any of it yeah a lot of it yeah we have like a good amount of recordings actually that we're just like we're like the world can never like hear these <laughs> so that's fun though it's kind of like two those are think i think two complementary sides of music because mm -hmm. you have kind of the more like like with like the what was the like the dave matthews guy what was his name uh patrick patrick yeah. so were you like actually learning like chords and Songs yeah, he was stuff, like super yeah. like he would be like, dude, all you have to do is pretend like you know. <laughs> and then like if you do that enough, like people will think you're sick at guitar. That's and just like good advice. Yeah, and I'd like it's funny cuz like I don't like fully believe that cuz like you can still suck and like 
sometimes I kind of suck, but like at the same time, like, I don't know. I think there's a little bit of truth to it. Like when you're playing a live show and you mess up, if you just keep on going and just like, just whatever, it's probably not even going to go noticed at all. Yeah. I mean, maybe like one technical guy will hear it or something like that. Um, <laughs> like, probably not. <laughs> I don't know, that's like, yeah, those oh, mistakes are so much bigger in your head than the audience will never, ever know for yeah, sure. I yeah, I agree. So did you and Patrick play shows out together? Yeah, um, we played at this one. It was like a... So Virginia is like... It's like a little more like country, I guess. It's like as if you live... Or like where we were at, at least, like in Richmond. And then there's like the West End. And then there's another part of like the country. So we were like right on the border of like where the country and the suburbs were. So it was kind of like an interesting like place. Mm-hmm. And it was more just like a beer drinking like Leonard Skinner cover band <laughs> crowd. Sure, yeah. And so like the first couple of times we played there, it was like very strange. And then people actually who, cause people would go there like every week. And then after like a month or two, people would look forward to hearing our music. And instead of playing like one cover song, they'd be like, Oh, why don't you guys play like four or five songs? And then mm-hmm. a couple, like one guy would jump on drums randomly. who was like the, the guy who was like the home drummer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, um, just like the drummer, like for that the house, venue? The, the house, house drummer. drummer, yeah. Like, wow. like yeah. I don't know if that's like if he really was, but he like <laughs> would just like hop up on stage and like we would just like play like some like, like we would there just was jam. Like a kit on stage. Yeah, yeah, we would just like jam and like have a really good time. Just get really drunk and like, yeah. just like I don't know, like it was super fun. That's so funny. I had a guest on a few weeks ago. Um, she also, she recently moved here from Virginia, and it sounds like a similar place where you came from. That's funny. Um, yeah, what school was it that you were at? Uh, I was at VCU. Okay, cool. So yeah, Virginia Commonwealth University. Nice. And then how, um, how long did you stay in Virginia? Did you stay there after college? No, I, um, so I moved out here. I I went there for one year and then I decided to move out here because I wanted just like a change of pace. I lived in Virginia my whole life. So I wanted to like see California and all the surf movies I watched growing up was like, it was always in California, San Clemente and stuff. So I was like, okay, I want to go see what this is about. Yeah. And then all these bands were from out here, like that I liked growing up, like the Doors and stuff. And um, I just wanted to see like what like what it was really about. So did so did you like visit first, or did you just like go for it and move out here? Um, I visited once for a week with uh, my family, and I thought it was cool. And then I went to the school, and then talked to the art teacher there and got went to that school um he put in a good word for me nice and then i pretty much finished school there what then, uh, what school was that uh point loma nazarene oh, yeah yeah um went there for three years and then um just i've been out here since then cool and so. were you playing music at that time yeah all through all throughout um that, that was like i guess that was like another reason why i felt like for some reason, I had this weird thought in my head, which I don't have anymore, but it was that I had to be out here in order for uh, my band to be legitimate or something like that, mm. which was like a weird, but it was like, I didn't have a band though. Mm. I was like, oh, I'll go out there and I'll like make it happen there. Yeah. And then I ended up actually pulling this guy that I played drums with my whole life, Jason, out here to like play a bunch of shows with me, which is like funny because it's like, I could have just stayed there and done it, but like <laughs> I, don't know, I felt like I had to go out here to, to like do it. But, sure, yeah. And uh, so when you were in college, is that like when you started Aquarium, or is that later? Yeah, I mean, so that first year in Virginia, that's when I I was like starting to I was starting to work on songs by myself, separate from the two guys that I was playing with. Mm-hmm. And then I just figured I'll just carry it carry it on, um, yeah. and just keep on doing that. And I kind of tried to do like a couple other projects like my under my name or like under like another name or another like a couple other things, but it didn't really like flesh out. And then I just like figured I'll just stick with this for now. And then like if someone else has a cool band and they're like, yo, we need like a bass player or something, then I'll just, I would hop in there and like try to do that too. But that hasn't really happened. So Sure. So you also play bass? I mean, I, I, I record all the instruments. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then just cool. like. Um, usually teach the part to someone that plays the instrument better and then they'll like be like okay I get what you're doing here and then they'll like make it way better nice and I'm like cool like that's that's right (laughs) yeah like (laughs) that's that was the point 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. When did you start? Like, have you always had like other people involved in the in the project, or has that been like a more recent thing? Um, I think for like performing, yeah, I have pretty much. I've done like maybe like a couple shows since I've been out here, like solo. But they didn't. I don't have like the the what like the. I don't have like computers and stuff to <laughs> make the music like really work. Right. So I yeah. so I've just it's been easier to find people to play those parts. Um, but then when I write, I'm usually I try to like I don't know I I just kind of isolate myself when I write because I want to for aquarium I want to figure out like what what I'm really thinking mm. and like what what's influencing me and then try to be honest about that. Yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. So it's kind of like, so I try to write write primarily by myself, and then sometimes like I'll make jams with people and stuff too, and then that'll actually turn into a song. Mm. So that's another way that I write too. Um, sure, but it sounds like most of the actual creating you like to do solo. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think it, it it's it's like a, that's like how I wanted to gear the project. Sure, yeah. yeah so And then so like if, um like you were offered a gig like next week like do you have like a group of musicians that you you play with now yeah Yeah, so like do you have like a regular like is aquarium like a regular like a stable group now um i have like so like i've got a cup like the guitar player that's might come is he's like pretty much always gonna play um there's a guy that plays bass who's like always down who that's like jed who Mm -hmm. got us involved and then um Let's see, like, there's one guy that plays drums that's, like, hit or miss, but, like, if he can't play, I'll play drums okay, and just yeah. sing, and, like, we'll make it work. Sure. But and if he, if he is on drums, are you just singing then, or how does... Yeah, singing, or sometimes I'll play guitar or keyboard. I don't know. It just depends, like, on what songs, like, we're like, oh, like, let's try this song, you know? Yeah. And then we'll do that. Yeah, cool. Uh, and so what, uh, like, what kind of shows have you played in San Diego? Like, what, um... What places? Yeah, what places. Um, Bar Pink, mm-hmm. um, Soda Bar, Marrow, Power Bar. Cool. Like, all the all the standard places. <laughs> Irenic, Space Bar. I don't know if it's the Space Bar anymore. Is it the Space Bar? It's still the space bar. Yeah. Um, and then whatever it was before that. Yeah. The, oh, I can't remember. I don't know. I, <laughs> ironic, yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, yeah. So you're getting out, getting to the various venues. Like, was yeah. it um, was it hard, like, coming in when you were coming in as a new musician, as an outsider to, to book gigs? No. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Not really. I just, like, I figured out who books the shows, and then I just went and met them. Like in person? Yeah, I would just literally just mm-hmm. walk up to them and be like, be like, oh, like the bartender said that you book shows here, um, you know, like, when, like when's a good time or like, w- like how far in advance are you booking them and stuff like that and like kind of just like would say, oh, I'm in a band, like we really want to play here. This is a really cool bar, and then that was like pretty much. Or or they'd give me the email to them, and mm-hmm. then I would just say the same thing basically. Sure. I think that's a good tip to actually meet them in person, though. Yeah, I, get so I recommend many that emails. to any band. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Like, don't send emails, really, unless you have to. Hmm. It's always better just to, like, put a name with a face and, mm-hmm. and like, because cause I think, like, another thing, like, a lot of people, like, think about when they're booking shows is that it's, like, some, like, somebody behind, like, a curtain or something. And it's, mm-hmm. like, it's just, like, a person. Yeah. And, like, you know, if you're, like, a musician and stuff, they're going to be into it probably, so... Right. Like, you yeah. you're automatically have that, like, going for you, and you're going to get booked a lot, probably, that way. Yeah. No, that's a really Seems good Seems like idea. the tactic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's, like, how I, like, would want to, I don't know. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. You think of it from the booking point of view, just, like, I think they want to make connections with Yeah, and people. they want to make money, too. So yeah, that's too. <laughs> you're like, it's like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you're there, you're showing that you're familiar with the space and you know what they're doing and you're mm-hmm. into it. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a good tip. Mm. Yeah. So let's take a quick, quick break and, and listen to one of the tracks he sent me. He sent me some really cool music. So, uh, yeah, let's listen to uh, Same Difference. This is a cool one. All right. We'll bring it back. Let's play. 
play the game It's just a game As deep as the melody Played for key I can't remember it Rolled up my sleeve seems to me that we all are so close to it Yeah, it seems to me that we're all pretty much the same Maybe it'll find me does it take to reach you? So I'm hungry for my soul But they're all too lazy And I'm too thirsty Yeah, it seems to me That we're all so close to it Yeah, it seems to me they were all pretty much the same Living on this planet Gobbled up our breakfast While others are hungry In the lovers' cockpit while the noxious fumes blown over confidence But it seems to me that we're all so close to it But it seems to me that we're all pretty much the same Okay, and we're back. That's a really cool track. Do you want to tell me about it? Do you remember it? Because we didn't actually listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, do, I know it definitely had like, like we were talking about before, like all your, um, the music that you sent me has that kind of lo-fi sound, which is really cool. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like to, to record that one? <gasps> Recording, same difference. I have a audio interface and I just direct I direct recorded the guitar first um and that's kind of where that song started so when you say direct recorded like oh what, like what does um, that mean? like uh like I played the guitar through the audio interface and I didn't run it through like a mic and an amp I just did okay. it I used oh, like gotcha. the um like into straight into garage band yeah whatever the built-in preamp is or whatever sure yeah uh I just used that, and then I just selected, like, I, I basically, it's like as if you had, like, a amp where you have, like, pre-made settings on it, mm -hmm. and I just picked, like, surf mm -hmm. amp or something, like, yeah, whatever, yeah. like, whatever the garage band preset is for that, and cool. then I took the vibrato off, because it's, like, a little much. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, um, do you know when, do you remember when you recorded that, how long ago that was? I think about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. So it's fairly recent for, yeah. Like how, I guess I didn't ask you this, like how, how long ago was it like that you first started with Aquarium? Like how, um, how long have you been doing this project? I've been putting songs out on Bandcamp and SoundCloud for, I think five years. Okay. Yeah. And then... Last year, I bought the Spotify. I paid the money mm -hmm. to do that. Cool. Which yeah. is like... <laughs> I know. It's, it's kind of like you have to, to pay money to, to yeah, put yeah. your music it's out awesome. there. It's awesome. It's so cool. But it's awesome to, it's like to see business. it up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Uh, yeah, so you recorded that a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then do you remember how you did the vocals on that? The vocals, I just have a Shure mic, Shure okay. uh, SM58, 
Um, and then I ran it through a reverb pedal and a overdrive pedal. Oh, cool. And did it like that. And then I also like double vocals a lot. Like sometimes I'll just literally duplicate the track and put mm. it on top of each other and do reverb on one. Or I'll sing one and sing it again so that it's like, I always heard that John Lennon did that, mm, and yeah. Kurt Cobain also did that. I, yeah, I did and that so, too. <laughs> yeah, so I just like... It's a good effect. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then also, sometimes like I would do like a couple backing vocals mm-hmm. in it. Um, yeah, cool. And then the, the drums, is it like a drum machine or like drums through GarageBand or, or those live drums? Those were... Uh, a preset on a keyboard that I have, like oh, a Casio. Oh, like cool. A, my friend gave me a Casio keyboard. Yeah. For, he, got, he like, got it for free or something, and I was like, dude, I love this thing. And he was like, I don't <laughs> yeah. use it. You can have it. Nice. I was like, okay. So how did you – did you just, like, put a microphone up to the keyboard? Well, you can you can do, like, an auxiliary to quarter inch oh, to audio interface. Oh, okay. So okay. I kind of, like – I don't know if you should really do it, but it works. So <laughs> sure. I did that. And then so you must have – like started with that drum track then is that how that worked yeah yeah i recorded the drum track first before Mm -hmm. anything else and that was just like i just would make it like i would just i I think i must have decided how long i wanted the song to be beforehand yeah so i'd say like oh let's do three minutes or let's do two minutes and Mm -hmm. 20 or something right because that's that's kind of like the sweet spot for like the surf songs i think it's like two minutes and 20 to 40. Oh, interesting. Because so it's just you, like... Yeah, you give some thought to the actual length of the song. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's like... I don't think like... For like a surf song that's like really not... Like orchestral or anything like that. Like mm-hmm. I don't think there's much more to it than just like... Like get the feeling there. Put some lyrics in there. That like are... Sort of like relaying the same as like how you feel about the instruments. Or as yeah. best as you can. Sure. And then kind of just, like, end it and then go into the next one. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, Because, like, I think I, I'm, like, really... When I listen to music, that's, like, about as much as I can do. Yeah. Because I just can't, like, keep on listening to it for too long. Unless it's, like, Led Zeppelin or something. But it keeps sure. on changing, so I keep on, like, forgetting that I'm listening to the same song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But otherwise, I just, like... I'm 280, like, I'm, I just can't focus on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when you perform the songs, a song like that live, do you also keep it really short? Do you have any, like, vamping and soloing or? I can't, like, control that usually. Like, right, whoever's, like, in yeah. the group is going to just, like, it's like, oh, we're soloing. Okay, cool. Like, sick. <laughs> like, let's do it, you know? And sure. then it's just, like, we're going. And then we're just groove. But, yeah. But, like, I'll usually say, like, let's do it quick, let's get through it, and then it never happens. But, it like, it's cool, like, that it works that way. And mm. that's, I think that's one of the best things about being able to work with other people is that it's, like, spontaneous. And I think that's, like, the highlight of doing it that way. Sure. So it sounds like you're able to kind of give up a little bit of control of your music when you bring other people in. I don't think I, like allow it to happen I just like it happens Mm. and then I'm like okay like I get to respond now and my response is to like be in a good mood (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's always a good idea (laughs) yeah that's you know so and that's like that's life yeah 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 absolutely and so did you say that you ever uh, performed live with the that Casio keyboard for the Mm -hmm. to get the drum tracks awesome Mm -hmm. it didn't go well Oh, really? Yeah, Why it's not? better just to do, like, I think it's better just to have, like, a real drummer all the time, like, live. Mm-hmm. For me. Yeah. For me. Like, only for me. <laughs> but. Yeah. I think that makes sense for this for the sound that you're going for. Um, yeah. I really like it. Like, I want it to work live, but it just, like, the, the, the computer is, like, way better at doing its thing than I am. <laughs> so, like, it stays constant, and then I get off somewhere because I'm like a human being yeah so it beats me <laughs> like, Damn computers. in front of in front of everybody right so. yeah no that's interesting I I have the same problem I play with loops and things plus live instruments and it's it's funny how yeah the computers really show all your flaws <laughs> uh yeah so I think it can be really helpful to have a live drummer for sure mm. 
Yeah. Uh, so do you think at this point you're, you'd be interested in bringing on any more uh, instruments or musicians? Yeah. Yeah. So mm. you're just kind of like the, the starting point, but it can it can grow from here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've recorded like so many different types of music by myself that I'm just like, because like I, I try to just like write things now or like the next, I guess the next thing that I'm going to do is just like a couple songs that are like just things that I like and I haven't really released any of them yet because I'm just thinking I'm trying to figure out like it's like do I really just like these and I should just keep them and just listen to them or should I publicize them so I'm kind of like in between about that but that's kind of like where the writing is happening now so sometimes it's a lot of instruments mm -hmm. not just like a guitar bass keyboard drums singing it'll be like Oh, like what? Are, like what? Are, like what? A saxophone sound like, mm -hmm. or like what would? Um, I don't know. Like I think hip hop does a good job of that a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, for sure. And I like that. Yeah. Do and if you brought in other instruments, like do you actually write out all of those parts, or would you just like bring in a saxophone player and be like, "What can you do with this?" Yeah, I think I would like record like a something like through like a MIDI keyboard because I can't really play them all. Mm -hmm. So I would like write it like for, like for them to hear it. And then I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, I don't really know. Because like I think each instrument too kind of has its way of playing. And then there's like a type of player that like plays that instrument. So like they can do it in a way that's, like if you're used to playing saxophone, your mind is going to be thinking about music in a different way than mm -hmm. like if you're someone that usually sings or plays guitar. So... I think like bringing in someone that actually does it is like gonna really get the point across better and I would like that's what I would want because I think it'd be better if I just kind of like let like like just made the song go like how it's supposed to go yeah yeah that's interesting I do think that um different it, depending on the instrument you're playing it gives you a different perspective on the music and mm -hmm. so as someone who plays different instruments do you feel like when you go from one instrument to an next like you get a different perspective on the song or you play it differently i think so yeah and i think it it's like it's literally like i think every time i pick up a different guitar i play a different song hmm. you know because it's like even if it's this even if it's like a strat and a strat it's like this one's white so it's like, whoa, like that's a white horse, you know, like, or like, I don't know. so it's like, yeah, it just sparks something in your brain. Mm -hmm. right? Cause yeah. it's the sound, like the sound mm -hmm. is like where it really is. And like, if you hear the sound, then it's, you can just follow the sound. Like you don't have to try to like play something if you hear the sound of it. Mm, yeah. Like it already has a sound that it, that it has and you can either like override that or try to, or you can just like let that sound kind of flow. Right. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a pretty like intuitive kind of way of approaching music. Yeah, I don't like writing it out that much because it doesn't make it fun for me anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it seems like a job. Right. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Do you have like an instrument that you prefer playing? I really like keyboards a lot. Yeah, which I is do like too. yeah, they're like they're <laughs> super cool. They can do pretty much everything. But I like like sh like I like like strings too like mm -hmm. any type of strings I think they sound really good. Mm -hmm. Like I really like like zither. Mm. It's like a like the I think it's oh man, I don't want to be wrong. Like, <laughs> it's a it's an interest it's an instrument that like it's like a tabletop oh, string yeah. instrument. Yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. And it sounds. Do you like, have one? I don't have mm. one, but like I love listening to them. Like it's. It's like my favorite. And then there's this Viking instrument that I love. It's like a didgeridoo, but it's made of like bronze and it's huge. Whoa. And it makes the sound of like the mountains. Like it's crazy. Whoa. What? Where did you stumble upon that instrument? Um, on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so like, cool. Yeah, but like I love those things. They're sweet. Wow. I, yeah, I don't. I don't even know. It's if like I've a ever battle, like it's happening, and then like people are like Whoa. up in the hills, like playing it to scare the, the enemies or something. It's, like, <laughs> it's freaking. Is crazy. it really? So it's gotta be like tremendously loud, then, right? Oh yeah. Wow. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, like I don't even know. Like I typed in like Viking, like horn, or like 
I don't know, something like weird like that. <laughs> That's funny. Cool. Well, let's hit, let's take another break and uh, listen to another one of your tracks. Uh, let's take a listen to Wand. This is a cool one. And now we have Ronnie. Ronnie, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. So you are the guitar player with Aquarium, is that right? Yeah, I'd often play guitar and like sing sometimes. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how how do you guys know each other? School. At uh, the Point Loma, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so how long have you been playing together then? Like four years, yeah. Nice. It was actually my freshman year roommate. He's he just like met Christian uh-huh. and some of his other friends, and he came back one day and was like, "Hey, you got to meet this guy. He like plays music and surfs." So <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a good description of of you. What you do. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we just listened to Wand. That was a really cool track. Um, did Did you play on that track, or is that is that all you on that one? Um, yeah, I think I recorded that, like, right when I got to that school. Okay. Like. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that one that, now that you guys play out live? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty awesome. much every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's another one, like, it's a really cool kind of lo-fi sound to it. Um, are you able to, like capture that kind of lo-fi sound at all live or is your live sound just completely different Hmm. i feel like a lo-fi sound would be probably just using lower quality instruments or amplifiers so (laughs) i mean i'm sure in our past we've had less quality (laughs) (laughs) right yeah i guess it's more of a recording thing than a live performance thing unless i don't know i mean i think like if you had like a bullet mic or something yeah yeah for the vocals. Or turn up the delay on the vocals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'd be interested to see you guys live because I feel like it's probably a different kind of energy and everything. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, like yeah. faster, usually. Mm-hmm. Faster sure. pace and more drawn out. Mm. Yeah, like you were talking about, like you like to have like these two to three minute songs when you record, but not so much when you play live a little bit longer. Yeah, I think we just, like, we start, like, having enough beers where we're, like, we're just kind of, like, I don't know, Jude, Jude starts, like, acting crazy, and then we're all just, like, start, like, really jamming. Yeah, a three-minute song can go to, like, a ten-minute song pretty yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, so, I think a lot, lot's on the thing. drummer, especially if you have a live drummer, if you're playing to a, a Casio keyboard, mm, not yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, and Jude's, like, really, 
like his energy is like really present mm. like mm -hmm. wherever he is like yeah so it's like it adds a lot to the to like the overall like feeling of everything sure because yeah. when i met him like he was playing in this band that was like super crazy mm. <laughs> like like not even like i don't like even, we won't even mention the name it's not the, crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah like it literally is like like crazy how it's like underground underground like <laughs> was it like noise rock or like no, what? Like, like, well like kind of like rap often kinda. like masks worn or mm. like also yeah like there's a element of rap like okay yelling rap <laughs> <laughs> but not like not like mean though but like the music's good though like yeah, it's they really actually good it out and they have good like the guitarist is great and like it's like a shakespeare play yeah they all they'll literally have, like, a guitar and stuff and they'll just like get in the crowd and slide <laughs> on their knees and like <laughs> stuff like that this sounds amazing yeah. <laughs> what is this does this still exist it's kind of sometimes like they, they admit <laughs> that it's kind of like a mock band though. Okay. like they would go yeah. for a certain song that they've heard a different band do and then huh. just do like a kind of version of that, but like really have fun with it. Okay. So. Gotcha. They don't actively like try to write new stuff. I think they're kind of yeah. just like pulled out for some party or something. <laughs> wow. Dude. And um, so that's your drummer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you met him? Through seeing that act? Pretty much. That's when I really met him. And then you're like, I like this I'd guy in my band? <laughs> like, once I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, there's like way more to you than <laughs> I realized. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any shows coming up? Possibly. No, not not planned right this okay. second. I've been, gotcha. like, the soda bar kind of like teased me and they were like, hey, we have a show. Do you want to play it? And then they were like, just kidding. We don't. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, sick. <laughs> But um, I don't yeah. know. I've been I've been actually uh, emailing um, Seven Grand. What's Seven Grand? It's like a whiskey bar in North Park. North Park. Okay. It, it's right oh. next to Queen Bees. And yeah. It's, do they have music there? Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. And it's like usually like jazz or something like that. Huh. And I was thinking, I was like, it would be cool to like play our music and then kind of do like a jazz jam. Like, yeah. kind of like, because I think they're just like, oh, yeah, play for, like, two hours. I don't think it's, like, a set. It's just, like, they're just like, oh, yeah, play for two hours. We'll pay you, like, 500 bucks or whatever. Something. Really? Do they or really like, pay that much? No, I, I'm, just, like, I'm, just <laughs> saying, like, I'm just, like, saying, like. It's not even in dollars. It's in Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> like, 500 Bitcoin. Yeah, you get 500 lot. bags of sand at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> or just, like, two cocktails at the same value. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, have you guys uh, like gone on any tours or anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where have you guys gone? Um, we went on a really fun trip last year um, with a whole different group of people actually mm -hmm. um, to like just like across like we went up the coast and then over through Reno and then all the way to the east coast and then down to like well, my... Reno to the east coast that's a jump yeah. <laughs> yeah like we play like Colorado and we stopped in Chicago but only for 30 minutes yeah it wasn't it's a quick set yeah <laughs> but we were in Colorado for like three days yeah it was okay. fun were you and you were like playing shows along the way yeah we played like a house show there oh, um cool. and then we played like a car show in Vail Aliens. Oh yeah, that was cool. We also played like a like an impromptu set by the river, and there's like motorcyclists coming by and like stopping and listening and leaving. Oh wow! And then we just had the drums and the Casio keyboard and. <laughs> nice. <that was> really <laughs> cool. cool. And how, so, how did you get those? Like, how did you set up those shows? Um. Yeah. Well, we just uh, we just decided to go places where we knew people, because it was like that seemed like the only way to do it. Yeah. Lots of emails. Yeah, sure. lots, <laughs> lots of emails, lots of no's. Mm. Lots of no's, yeah. Like six well, months of no's. It's nice to at least hear something back. Most of the time, you just don't hear anything. Yeah. Yeah. And then, were you like staying with friends along the way too? Yeah, we didn't pay for a single hotel. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. No way. We only slept on the ground like half the time. Half the time. And um, yeah, so who was in the band at that that time when you were touring? Was it just the two of you, or was it? Um, well, it was, like, was with us. Yeah, uh, Balby, Joe, Jason, 
They were, that's, oh, okay, there's a lot of you. So yeah, Joe mm-hmm. Speldy, he's like, he went to school with us as well, but he played the drums on the East Coast. Shit. Okay. Or no. sorry, the West Coast, yeah. yeah. He was oh, just okay. like, so San they Diego, weren't all with you Huntington. all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, Jason lives in Virginia <laughs> Beach where Christian's from, so he just met us in New York and played like Philadelphia and right. Virginia. So. Gotcha. So you were able to like go back home to. Uh, to go mm. back to play some of those venues. That's cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. Nice. Something that I wanted to do. That was like the first time that I that I played anywhere where I grew up. Yeah. Which was like pretty, like felt good for me. Yeah, totally. Nice. And uh, yeah, are you guys working on recording any new stuff now? Mm-hmm. And because uh, it sounds like in the past you've mostly done like all the instrumentation and everything. So now that you're having other people play on the recordings. Yeah, we have an EP coming out that has you, Jed and Jude and Balby. Jude and okay. ba- oh yeah, Jude and Balby all on. Okay, cool. Um, and then also, yes, yeah, so that EP is like kind of pretty much done just like fine-tuning it a little bit and then also like another album that's like in the few like coming up pretty soon cool and mm-hmm. so where where did you record that ep um at in the garage in a garage and then also at uh, your house yeah at my house yeah okay. is that like with a full drum kit mm-hmm. oh, cool. in my house yeah, yeah. it's crazy <laughs> it was like the room is smaller than this oh yeah how did that, how did it was, that go? Well, we hung like a mic from one of the lights on a fan. Like okay. that would be in the middle of the room. Yeah. And that was like our overhead mic. Nice. For the drum set. Did wor- you do like a live yeah. recording or was it like drums first? Okay. It was live, yeah. Nice. It, it worked out. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It was like two instrumentalists at a time. Yeah. We came up with some great bass lines that night when we recorded those <laughs> songs. Like seriously, like the song was like, a couple of the songs were, we recorded them originally like a few years ago. And they were really good, and we were like, these are like perfect, but the instruments were like at certain times, maybe the drums would get really loud, or like the mm-hmm. guitar would fall out, and we'd be like, they're really not, we're not able to publicize them. Mm-hmm. And then we recorded them again, like planning on recording them, but they were like missing something because there was like something that we had at the beginning that we didn't have that time. And then uh, when Jed came and Jude came that night, we got like. Like all of a sudden, like Ju- I mean, uh, Jed just started playing bass lines that were like, it like totally like refreshed the whole sound of it again. Mm. So it like, it was just like we were like, oh yeah, that was the feeling that we were like originally going for, but we like literally forgot about it, mm. you know. And then it like that that so that worked out pretty good. Yeah, is it is it kind of nice to like as opposed to doing all the recordings by yourself before to like be bringing in other people like how's that process been different i think it's like quicker to do it that way um as far as i mean i think i think both are fine really Mm. you know i think like i like to do it both ways yeah it's just different Cool. It's, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you guys are, like, all over the place now, like you're saying, like, Spotify and uh, SoundCloud and everything. Uh, YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Oh, yeah, YouTube, yeah. Cool. Uh, where else can people find you, find your music? Or... Well, you still have a lot of stuff on Bandcamp, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's kind of weird. Like, I haven't gone through and, like, really, like, made everything, like, exactly the same and overlapping. Like, you, like some recordings that are, like, really old that I kind of, like, have not updated are, like, on one or sure. not the other. Or, like, maybe I'll do, like, a little voiceover, mm. like, at some point on, like, SoundCloud. But different platforms I think of in different ways. Like, I think SoundCloud's kind of like a sketchbook to mm-hmm. me. Like, yeah. and it's, like, kind of, like, it's like a public sketchbook that people can like see the sketches that you've done. And then I kind of think of Spotify as like, as more of like a, like if you're going to like make a CD and like give it out at your shows or like sell it at your shows, I kind of think of Spotify more in that way. Yeah. That for some reason. That totally makes sense. Cause you can put like the complete package and SoundCloud, you can kind of release them one song at a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like SoundCloud something where it's like, like, I think, like, people that want to listen to, like, like, 
the classic bands or like any popular band go to Spotify usually, mm. I, or at least maybe I shouldn't say anybody else. That's what I do. <laughs> and then, um, like if I'm looking to hear somebody's track, that's like they're like, oh, check this out. I, like I want to hear your input. Then it's like on SoundCloud. Sure. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. For me. Yeah, I think there's. More-